Okay, in this uh, screencast, we're going to talk about uh, graphing the uh, solution, or in other words, the answer to an inequality. And there's a few steps we need to follow, and but I think it's quite straightforward once we understand the, the principles. So first of all, let's just take an example. If I have the solution of an inequality, and say I have something like this, x is greater than or equal to 3, uh, what is the answer to that? Well, there is not just one individual answer. There's a whole set of answers, or as a, we call it a solution set. And so uh, in this case here, you would say that x could be equal to um, a, whole, a whole pile of, of things um, because there's so, so many answers. But uh, let's just say it could be equal to, well, first of all, it could be 3 because it says x. And it could also be four. Uh, it can also be anything between three and four. Because it's all any, you know, three point five is bigger than three. Um, it could be the square root of ten, which is three point something. Anything like that. So five, you know, six point two, anything. Just all the numbers to infinity. And so there's just multiple, multiple answers to this thing. So how do you, um, that the, algebraically, this is the way you write the solution, but how do you graph that? Okay, so this is what we do. It says there's a few steps here. First of all, we draw a number line. Oops, a little too fast there. We draw a number line, uh, negative being on the left, positive being on the right. Okay, so we draw the number line. The middle number on the number line should be the number in our solution, around, around the middle. Uh, draw a circle around the number from your solution. Number four, look at the inequality symbol to decide whether the circle should follow, uh, should be hollow or solid, sorry. And we have our symbols there. Uh, draw an arrow starting from the circle and pointing in the direction of the symbol from your solution. We'll just do some examples in just a second here. But first, let's fill in these blanks. It says, uh, note a closed or solid circle indicates the values included in the solution set. Okay, when graphing, okay, when graphing a, a solid, okay, in other words, shaded in, shaded in uh, circle, will be used when you have this symbol or that symbol. So the greater or less than with an equal sign underneath it. Okay, a hollow or empty circle indicates the value is not included in the solution set. So in graphing an empty, okay, or or hollow, oops, hollow circle will be used when you have a symbol without an equal sign. Okay, so either of those. Okay, so that's basically the. Now let's just take a look at these examples, and uh, and go from there. So the first one, uh, we've got x is bigger than five. So what we do is you put start the middle with five, and we go six, seven, eight. Go the positive going to the right, and go smaller to the left. Okay, something like that. Next step, step two. It said up there, I believe that you uh, make a circle. So we're going to put a circle, and we use the number five for the. We put the circle at the number five because that's our solution. Okay, and we look at this symbol. Does the symbol have an equal sign underneath it? Okay. Does it have a single symbol underneath it? Well, it does not. So I'm looking at this thing, see if it has underneath it what's underneath it, and nothing's there. So therefore, I leave it hollow. And now, if this was, consider this like an arrowhead. If this V-shaped symbol is like an arrowhead, which direction is it traveling? Which, which direction is it pointing in? Well, it points to the right. So I do that and put that same arrowhead on the end of it. And there we go. We've just graphed all the numbers bigger than 5, but not including 5. 
So it's just an empty circle shown. It doesn't include 5. Okay, do the same thing with the next, next example. Again, I'm going to uh, start in the middle here. I'm going to put uh, negative 2. We're going to get bigger. I'm going to go smaller to the left. There we go. Okay, next step. I'm going to put a circle around what number? Negative 2. Okay circle around the spot at negative 2. It is not filled in because it has just an arrow with no equal sign underneath it. And which direction is that thing going? Well, it's going to the left. So I start at the circle and put an arrow to the left. Okay, simple as that. So x is less than negative 2 means everything to the left of negative 2. Once again, try the next example. X is bigger than or equal to negative 4. Okay, well, let's again, the middle, roughly in the middle, somewhere in here, we put negative 4. And so we'll just make the numbers go bigger to the right and smaller to the left. Okay, next step again is I'm going to put a circle around the negative 4, because that's our number. And what about this circle? Oh, it says the circle has an equal sign under it here. So I'm going to fill it in solid, because it's going to equal that number. Okay. And uh, let's see. And now we're going to go. Which way is the arrow going? It's going to the right. So I go to the, put it to the right. And I put my arrow going that direction because that's what it says. The arrow is pointing that direction in my symbol. So the symbol here is very important on how to graph this thing. Um, okay, let's do one more. Oh, 2 is less than or equal to x. How is this? Well, in this case, it looks like I'm going to draw the arrow to the left. But wait a minute. The x is not on the left-hand side. That's a problem. It's not on the left-hand side. Therefore, I have to change this so it is. It's, it's vital that it's on the left-hand side for us to graph properly and easily here. So let's just switch this thing around. I'm going to flip this thing around, the whole thing. So what happens is this thing becomes x and the 2. So we switch sides, and the symbol has to flip around to him, flipping the whole thing around, including the symbol. Now, let's start with uh, the number here. The number 2 is in the middle. Make it bigger. Bigger numbers to the right. And smaller numbers to the left. Okay, so what I do, I put a circle at my 2, and it is solid, so let's fill that in. And of course, how do I know it's solid? Because of this line right underneath it there, the equal sign. See so the equal sign there, it's going to be solid. And uh, which direction is this thing going to go? Well, I look at this thing here to see which direction it's going to go. And it's going to the right. So I draw my arrow to the right, put the arrow head in the end of it, and there we go. Everything equal to 2 and above it is a solution. Okay, so that I think is hopefully fairly straightforward. Let's go down and look at some little bit more challenging ones in the uh, next page. Here we see I've called this uh, two graphs in one. We're changing inequalities to graphs. Okay, in this case here, I have the first question. I have this little. I've got two of them. X is bigger than negative two. X is less than three. In this case here, I'm going to put my. Uh, 
the numbers on here. Let's just put um, 4, 3, 2, 1. And both of these numbers on my graph, negative 2 and positive 3. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to put a circle at both places. So the circle at negative 2. Okay, if I just graph ne this negative 2 one, what happens? Well, I'm going to start at negative 2. It is not solid. It's empty. And it's going to be going to the right. So I would draw that. Oop, let's just redraw that because that's a little angled here. Okay, so let's draw that again. And I'm going to go that direction. The arrow is going to the right. The other one, if I graph this one, let's take another color. And this thing I'm going to circle the 3. Okay, and it's also hollow. There's no line underneath it. And I'm going to pick an arrow to the left this time. So I'm starting here, and I'm going to go to the left. It says here now, x is bigger than negative 2 and less than 3. Both of those things have to be true for this in this graph. So what happens is, the only part of the graph I really need is the part that overlaps. So this part here is unnecessary and the part down here is unnecessary. So if I would take and uh, like white that out, I could just take and white out the part I don't really need. It looks something like this. Okay. There. And that's what my graph should look like. It should look like uh, two circles with a line between them. In this case, we have two lines, but it was just like one line between them. In this case, they're both solid, one at negative two, one at three. Let's look at the next, ex oh, before we go to the next example, uh, well, let's do the next example, then we'll talk about the next part of this. Um, X is bigger than one, so we need uh, to take care of this business. We need, uh, so let's start down here with 0, 1, 2. Try to get all these numbers on so I can get. There we go. And again, there's going to be a uh, circle at 1. Let's just uh, circle at 1. A circle at 6. So the one from 1 is going up this direction, and the 6 is coming down this direction. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get, they're going to overlap right there. And the part that comes off both ends, you're not going to include that. We will just wipe that part out. So between 6 and 1 is the solution. Okay, so underneath these graphs, it says here, or we can write these two, okay, two things as one expression. So what I can do is this. Negative 2 is the lower one. 3 is the upper boundary. There's two boundaries here. And the x is going to be anything in the middle. So x is going to be bigger. Oops, let's just uh, make that a little bit clearer. x is going to be bigger than negative 2. Uh, negative 2 is smaller than x, in other words. And it's going to be smaller than 3. So that's a way of writing in one step those two equalities above. The same with the next one. Again, I've got 1 as one boundary. I've got 6 as the other boundary. The x is going to be in the middle. All those answers in between are the solutions to this thing. And so x is going to be bigger than 1 and less than 6. Okay, if those were solid circles, if it was x is bigger than or equal to 1, then I'd put an equal sign underneath those things. But in case the case is just hollow, it's just bigger than or less than. Okay, so last thing, changing graphs to inequalities. Here's a couple of graphs I've drawn. Let's change these to inequalities. Well, the first one, um, the easiest, well, we've got, we got two boundaries here. we got negative 2. So let me just change this thing. Negative 2, and the upper one's 2. And we've got all the answers are in the middle. Okay, and so here, 
it's going to be x is bigger than negative 2 and it's smaller than 2. Those are hollow, so they're not equal to it. In number 8, similar idea. We have negative 1, we have 3. Again, there are solutions for x are in the middle, except the bottom one here is it's bigger than negative 1, okay? but it's less than or equal to 3. So less than or equal to 3. I need to put a line under that symbol because it's, it's solid. The 3 is solid. And I could do it that way, or I could do it this way. x is negative 2. And x is less than 2. OK, so I could do it in 2, or I can do it in 1. In this case here, again, x is bigger than negative 1. Or and, or, or and, x is less than or equal to 3. There. So that uh, hopefully gives an idea of how to graph these things.